Hello and welcome to Viewpoint, I'm Volodymyr Soluhub. Join me now to discuss the adoption of long overdue changes to the competition legislation of Ukraine is Deputy Chairman of the Anti-Monopoly Committee of Ukraine, Mr. Maria Nizhnik. Ms. Nizhnik, welcome to Viewpoint. Hello. Uh, Ms. Nizhnik, so the uh, changes to the um, antitrust legislation have been adopted by the Parliament. What does this mean for the Anti-Monopoly Committee of Ukraine? Actually, such changes are really important for the activities of Anti-Monopoly Committee of Ukraine because, as you probably know, the changes are related to merger control procedure. And it's not just the opinion of uh, Ukrainian Competition Authority, but uh, authorities in other countries that especially merger control is aimed to prevent further violation of competition law because while considering the... Um, to grant the approval or to prohibit the transaction, the committees are evaluate the potential negative effect on the market, potential uh, behavior of the merged parties and potential behaviors of our competing parties. So that's the important mechanism. And as you know, Ukraine used to be one from the countries which used to have the lowest threshold supply. And we had about 50 or even more percent uh, transactions which just technically fall within this uh, jurisdiction of our authority. We were talking to the legal expert about this law just a few days ago and he said that yes, on the one hand, this will decrease the number of filings which go through the Anti-Monopoly Committee of Ukraine, but at the same time, the quality of the analysis will be much higher. Can you explain how will that work? Um, yeah, and actually that's the other expected development in competition law, which is clearly stated in the agreement of association agreement. So there are more laws you're expecting to be passed? Uh, not laws. It will be rather internal commission regulation, but still it will be obligatory for the parties. And definitely uh, the analysis will be more complex uh, because uh, these transactions are really somehow will affect competition in Ukraine and based on our obligations we shall provide with the part in certain guidelines on horizontal assessment of these mergers. So it will include legal analysis, it will include for sure economic analysis because actually competition law is something in between law and economics. I've asked this question, um, the, the legal expert, I want to ask this question you as well. Uh, the, the bill was just passed, adopted by the parliament. The president has to still to sign this law. Do you expect the president will sign it into law? Um, actually, I don't see any reasons why he shouldn't you know, not to sign it. So we do expect that it will sign it, yeah. The Antitrust Authority of Ukraine is in close cooperation with the uh, European Commission, the, the European um, Antitrust Body. So what was the reaction from the, from the European Commission on the adoption of this law? Uh, actually, they also wait for, for that law to be adopted. And uh, when the first reading, uh, when the draft in the first reading was adopted by the parliament, we had uh, several discussions with the representative of the European Commission and actually we provided the um, members of the parliament with our comments based on the, our discussion with the European Commission. And these comments, they were really um, reflected in the final draft. So they're fine with it and they really think that such law is pro-European. Yeah, it looks like they are welcoming the adoption of this law. Ms. Nishnik, so can you tell us a little bit more about the further steps which are planned by the, either the Parliament or the, your authority at de further deregulation of the business in Ukraine? Because obviously such types of changes, they do help the business to, uh, they do help the companies to do business easier in Ukraine, correct? Yeah, correct, sure. Uh, if we're talking of merger control rules, as I mentioned, we still need to adopt these horizontal guidelines. Uh, and then, of course, we need to adopt our internal regulation that envisage the procedure for filing documents, for considering the documents. And I'm almost sure that uh, such regulation will provide more comfort to the parties because we established simplified procedure. We intend to limit the amount of information to be, discover, uh, to be discussed. So it's really, uh, how should I say, really aimed to make 
party's life easier, business party's life easier. Then, uh, I don't know if you heard, there is another draft in respect of um, penalties regulations. But even without the such draft was adopted by the parliament, uh, half a year ago we introduced uh, the guidelines of penalty regulations, which limit commission discretionary or discretion on imposition of fine. And now parties has more comfortable, more comfort, it's more feasible for the parties what will be the potential fine for their violations. From, Ms. Nishin, from your standpoint as the regulator, um, are you concerned that these easing up of rules for, 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 for businesses will lead to um, the business abusing these, uh, these relaxed laws and uh, trying to, to, to wiggle their way and uh, finding loopholes for, uh, for, for, for the market violations. I could agree that, the, as you mentioned, relaxed law, they're not actually rela uh, relaxed law. It's more actually we try to require from the business really information we need and the actions we need. And I don't think it will affect their potential willingness to escape somehow, well, uh, somehow sanctions for breaches. So um, other options is competition pr uh, advocacy. So we're really aiming to file more information to make our laws, to make our practice more feasible and, mo and more predictable for the parties. And in this case, I strongly believe that in opposite, it will prevent potential violations from the party rather than, aim to, uh, rather than lead to the increase of the amount of violations. A lot of senior officers with the Anti-Monopoly Committee of Ukraine who were appointed uh, just recently, they came from business um, environment and you yourself, you're coming from, from business. You were, moreover, you were a competition lawyer, so you were working with the Anti-Monopoly Committee of Ukraine on the other side. So now when you're on this side, how does that feel and um, how, how does your experience as a lawyer help you to make changes within the Anti-Monopoly Committee of Ukraine? Uh, actually, it's a good issue because, um, generally speaking, it's very helpful because uh, definitely we can understand business and we can understand business purposes and why companies do such or such. From the other point of view, definitely we are state authority and we need to prevent the we need to protect competition and we need to prevent violations. So I do believe that because of our business background, we can easily, easily find the balance between the state, uh, state interests and business interests. Uh, Ms. Nizhik, and my final question, um, on January the 1st, uh, the uh, certain provisions of the association agreement between Ukraine and EU came into force. You as the regulator, the Anti-Monopoly Committee of Ukraine, do you expect uh, the increase uh, of foreign business in Ukraine, the, the, the business from, from EU, in light of that agreement? At least from our side, we do everything to be done, I mean, to the business to be increased. Yeah, but, but do, you, do you expect, again, if we were talking about the, the merger filings, do you expect like, big com European companies coming into Ukraine, do you expect more filings in light of these, uh, of, these, of these changes? Yeah, because, I mean, the law is, as I mentioned, it's more favorable for the parties. And, for instance, if, uh, um, like, one or two years ago, every single transaction should be filed with Ukraine, and really companies were very conservative in this respect because if you file once, it means you need to file every time. And if we are talking about multinational corporation, they have acquisitions and mergers every month or every week. And now, because the law really provides for the nexus with jurisdiction with Ukraine and only will cut the transaction which may affect competition in Ukraine, I think the they will be more willing to, to comply with the mandatory provisions. Of yeah, it looks like these changes will make the competition laws indeed more reasonable. Ms. Nizhnik, many thanks for joining us today. Uh, we were discussing the amendments to the competition legislation recently adopted by the parliament, which are aimed at improving the investment climate in Ukraine with Deputy Chairman of the Antitrust Authority of Ukraine, Ms. Maria Nizhnik. Thank you for watching Viewpoint.